my god, it's happening. Tier 6 Jets finally happening. Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God Jesus. Good afternoon, you wee bastards, and welcome to the best day of my life. <clears throat> That might be a little bit of an exaggeration. Welcome back to another War Thunder dev blog video with Koala. What is going on over there at Gaijin Entertainment? <laughs> How much coffee have they been having? What happened to the vodka? <laughs> Update 1.85 titled Supersonic is going to be one of the most extensive patches to War Thunder that we've ever seen. God, all we need now is some new maps and well, we'll get into that later. A full Italian tank tech tree and now rank 6 jets with air-to-air -air missiles. I mean, past the tanks is something we've been waiting for for over a year, but tier 6 jets? How long have we been waiting for them? Five years? <laughs> well, after I made a video earlier this year stating that, according to Gaijin, we would never be getting rank 6 jets or air-to-air -air missiles, now, six months on, I finally get to say this. Today's devlog announced that the F100D Super Saber and MiG-19 PT Farmer a Javelin Mark 9 will be coming to the aircraft tech trees in War Thunder, along with air-to-air -air guided missiles. I am so insanely glad Britain is getting to join in immediately, unlike with helicopters. Now, that old video I made is obviously completely wrong now, and I know a bunch of you lads have been seeing it in your recommended feed and thinking that I must be retarded, but that video was made so long ago, and the purpose of it was kind of to report on Gaijin's current, that being at the time, standing on the addition of Rank 6 Aviation, which at the time they were saying, we've been doing internal tests, they don't look good, don't hold your breath, it's probably not coming. The whole purpose of that video was to basically discuss that information, and now I am pleased to report that, well, the title is redundant, but uh, it was always a little edgy and, and clickbaity, I'll admit. Everyone's been saying, oh, well, we saw this coming, they had to do it eventually, but I don't think anybody thought it would come right now. Italian tanks are being significantly overshadowed, it seems. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. First the M3 Bradley, and now a whole new part of the game with Rank 6 Aviation. Aviation, no less, in War Thunder. I mean, Gaijin hasn't cared about air battles for years. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if variants of the T-72 made it into the game this patch as well. Maybe Gaijin wants to hide some problems with the Italian tanks. Let's hope not. Anyway, you Italian tank fans that are jealous of Rank 6 Aviation coming the same patch and overshadowing Italian tanks, I don't think you should be too worried. It's still the main part of the update, I would say. As a European Canadian says, it really doesn't matter what the update is called. I'm having a lot of trouble containing my excitement right now. Tier 6 Jets is something I've been advocating for for what seems like forever now, and they're finally coming. I know some people are going to say, oh, fix the game before adding new shinies, or that this is a bad idea, complaining that Germany and other nations don't get rank 6 jets yet, or that we're going to have noobs in top tier with jets with premiums. I hear all you guys' complaints, I do. But credit where credit is due. If you ever needed confirmation that we can get Gaijin to listen to us, well, first we had them finally offer up a fix to the parts and FBE issue in rank 6 tanks, and now they're putting some massive development into air battles. After all this time, Gaijin, you lads are absolutely bra. What a time to be playing War Thunder. By the way, for anyone who's getting confused, bra is Scottish slang for awesome. In this video, we're going to go over the tier 6 jets that have been announced so far, the new mechanics as far as air to air missiles and missile defence systems goes, the new anti-missile defences for helicopters, and the Q&A that Gaijin included with the dev blog, and just chat about what this will do to the existing game. Then, in tomorrow's video, I'll cover the premium jet packs. So, What's been confirmed so far is that we're getting a 6th rank, and it will not be in a closed beta format, where only buyers or certain players will have the ability to join. No, everyone will be getting to join in immediately, so long as they can actually research these things. The aircraft that have been confirmed so far are the F-100D Super Sabre for the United States, the MiG-19 PT model, or the Farmer, for the Soviets, and the Gloucester Javelin Mark 9 for the Brits. I've also heard Ash talk about the Mysteri 4A and G91Y, but I don't think either of them are confirmed right now. They may come immediately, they may not. Now all of these aircraft will perform relatively similarly, with the F-100 being, I believe, the fastest of the three, and the Javelin being the slowest. Actually, the Gloucester Javelin Mark 9, as far as I can gather, is around 200km per hour slower than the F-100D. However, the European Canadian made a fantastic video on this, talking about how if speed was all that mattered, the Hunter would currently own the game, and it obviously doesn't. Speed is arguably the most important aspect for current top-tier jet gameplay, but it's not the only one that matters, it's not the be-all and end-all. 
The MiG-19 variant we're getting is the PT, not the MiG-19S, which would be a lot faster than the Super Sabre, I believe. The PT uses older engines, and it should sit roughly on par with the Hun. The maneuverability of these jets at their top end speed is going to be abysmal and therefore your best bet for engaging targets is going to be to reduce speed and only put your throttle to the firewall when you're flying defensively or covering long distances. This factor remains true even given the air to air missiles. My god have I been waiting to see that for too long. These missiles are infrared or heat seeking missiles and require the target to remain in the crosshairs for a good few seconds before they'll achieve lock. So trying to get kills with missiles against slower, more nimble targets while you're at full speed is going to be tough. And keep in mind, you can only carry a couple of these things. The thing with jet combat in real life, it's that it's very expensive and inefficient to be going full speed all the time, and many jet dogfights, particularly in the Vietnam War or the Falkland Wars, etc., happen at comparatively low speeds. Where the insane capability of these engines and the performance of these planes comes into greatest effect is in their climb rate and acceleration, which allows for them to escape bad situations very quickly. Engagements between jets even in our current game often result in the two opponents decreasing speed down to as low as 800 kph, even in planes like the Sabre or MiG-17 that can achieve 1100 just to be able to maneuver more effectively. The problem I see with this however is that the F-100s will just be able to disengage from any fight, egress out of the battle, reclimb, re-engage and slowly work their opponents down on fuel. This might be an even bigger problem if these aircraft are getting into battles on our current jet maps, as on Korea, in the time it takes for CL-13A to go from, say, approaching for a landing to fully stopped, let alone finishing up repairs, refueling and rearming, an F-100D will be capable of covering the entire map and getting to within easy missile launching range, and the CL-13 won't be able to do a thing to avoid it. This will be an issue with any jet, and actually given the high landing speeds of aircraft like the Farmer, you'll be vulnerable for even longer while you're slowing down. Replacing the current airfield AA with SAM sites might help this, or just making it a guaranteed kill if you come near the base, but that creates its own issues with people simply camping at their airfield, like some do already. Bottom line, we don't just want new maps or new gameplay mechanics now to spice up gameplay, we need them, just to retain a semblance of functionality. I'm sure, however, that Gaijin does plan to address this, adding in maps specifically for these aircraft and hopefully locking them out of the smaller maps we have currently, like Korea. Spain is a toss-up, it might be okay. I also hope to see some type of ticket drain based game mechanic in air battles so that games can't be infinitely extended by someone camping their base, or won by a certain team whose AI captures a certain area. Basically, if both teams do nothing, one team is always going to win. I've had a couple of matches over the last few days in jets where we've absolutely stomped the enemy team, but there's been one F-84G that just decides to run for the entire game and there's nothing we can do about it. And before long, the tickets just drain out and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Winning needs to be a result of outplaying the enemy, not just abusing the AI. If you win because of AI, it should at least be player driven. As in, you should have to do something for your team to win based on AI. I believe the word I'm looking for here is balance. <laughs> The missiles these jets are going to be equipped with have a relatively high failure rate, often overshooting their target or failing to track, and guidance states that they can lose tracking if the target flies directly towards the sun. This is an interesting mechanic and should help keep these missiles balanced. They can't retain lock past a certain number of Gs, numbers which we pull in War Thunder all day long, and they require the pilot to keep contact with the target to achieve lock, as I mentioned earlier. Once you've fired, it's fire and forget, unlike semi-active radar guided missiles which require you to keep the target locked while the missile is in flight, but depending on how long it takes to achieve that lock, it may not be as easy as you think. Fly also talked about spotting distances and mechanics needing to be a little more reliable and this is definitely true. My main concern though is that these missiles may not be powerful enough and this will result in you having to RTB quite often if all of your missiles miss their targets, which is somewhat likely. We also don't know that it will be a guaranteed one hit kill with missiles, but I would assume it would. Of course, you'll still have gun armament when you fired off all your missiles, but I have a feeling most pilots would rather look for an opportunity to restock their missiles than try to engage aircraft with far superior maneuverability in a gunfight. It'll also be extremely difficult for these aircraft to dogfight each other without missiles, as the closure rates of supersonic jets is insane, almost double the closure rates of our current top tier jet fighters at top speed. Mainly, as Fly and many others have said, we need some reworkings to base gameplay in order to complement these aircraft. 
Keep in mind though guys, I come from the perspective of an RB pilot. I don't even want to touch on how these aircraft might perform in arcade. I'll never play them in arcade, I'm not an arcade player, I'm not experienced with that game mode, so to offer up my opinions would be near pointless. The most I can say is that I think given the g-forces you can pull in arcade, I think missiles will be worthless. Simulator, I will say, is going to be extremely interesting. Maybe if I get a, a VR headset for Christmas, we'll do a video with the F100 and Sim. Leave a comment if you want to see that. Now, by what I've said, I really have few concerns that missiles will ruin the current top tier gameplay in RB, which is extremely reliant on skill and will likely continue to be, if not quite to the same extent. However, since the teams were reworked earlier on this year, where Russia, America, Britain and France now fight together against Germany, Japan and Italy, like World War II never ended, the gameplay has been significantly flawed in my opinion. One side is made up half of bombers like the Voltor, IL-28 or B-57 slash Canberra, while the other not only has no bombers, but they also have superior aircraft like the CL-13A and, in my own opinion, the F-40 Sabre. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that top tier gameplay right now isn't exactly perfect, and that air to air missiles certainly aren't going to make it any worse. It's going to be extremely unfortunate, however, if you're in a 9.0 jet, the only player left, against a supersonic jet like the MiG 19 or Super Saber, irregardless of missile armament. That fight might be fair in that the rank 6 won't be able to easily kill the rank 5 in an aerial engagement, it just won't have the maneuverability, but the rank 5 also won't be able to kill the rank 6 if he plays with any level of intelligence at all and just retains his speed and that rank 5 is going to have to RTB first. Try taking a P-51 Mustang into a 9.0 match and tell me that you have a fair fight. That's what this will be like. Sure, a skilled player can get kills in his P-51 but only while his teammates are alive to act as distractions or going head on. They're powerless in a 1v1 unless their opponent is brainless. The current 9.0s versus Super Sabres will be the same way. You can certainly do it but you'll find it near impossible to face up to a supersonic jet in a 1v1 engagement. This, however, may see increased importance placed on the ground-based objective of air realistic, and see sabers and migs more likely to be carrying rockets in order to attack ground targets. I'd also like to see underwing fuel pods with the ability to jettison them once empty, as, in my opinion, these make jets like the saber or super saber look a hundred times better. Aesthetically. Not that that carries the highest importance. Speaking of which, don't buy those damn premium packs. Next topic we have to talk about is the new missile defense mechanics that are being added in this patch, and as the European Canadian said, thank god we are getting a new mechanic and a counter to it at the same time. Fantastic. Now, it's not clear whether airplanes will get these missile counters, but Gaijin states that helicopters will be seeing flares to deter heat seekers, as well as exhaust infrared suppression systems and counter optical electronic systems, which would seem to suggest that we're going to have some kind of functional radar related game mechanics. These new systems, as stated by Gaijin, will reduce the ranges at which missiles can lock onto helicopters. Helicopters are of course also seeing the introduction of air-to-air -air missiles, but depending on how that affects your ground-based armament, and given these new counters, I once again question the likelihood of them being all that effective. They certainly won't be god-tier. These helicopter-based missile defense mechanics seem really cool to me, I can't wait to see them implemented, but given the high spawn cost of aircraft in tank battles already, and given the missile defense mechanics and how effective they may or may not be, it may be rare that you end up having to use them. Think of a nuclear deterrent. Next thing we have to go over in this video is the Q&A from Gaijin, which was included in the dev blog. First of all, Tier 6 is not going to be made up of 3 aircraft for long, if it ever even is, although I suspect more than 3 will be there on release, that's just what's been announced today. Further development of Tier 6 will be coming in subsequent patches, with the top tier for planes getting incrementally higher just as it has for tanks ever since patch 1.71. This can only be a good thing in my opinion, as it means we might get some realistic matchups between planes and tanks. Thinking about it, the tanks we have currently should be supported by aircraft like the F-18 Hornet and Su-27 Flanker. Even Super Sabres are dreadfully out of date compared to the tanks we currently have. Eventually, we will be getting some more and more modern aircraft, which I find exciting as hell. Bombers will initially not be joining rank 6, I'm very happy about this from a gameplay perspective, bombers suck at high tier and they're next to useless in War Thunder in general for the most part. But at the same time, the enthusiast in me wants to see or fly a B-52 or Tu-22M in War Thunder. In the same response, Gaijin also makes reference to subsonic attackers for rank 6, which in my opinion can only mean one thing. Well, one thing and its counters for other nations, but guys, a10 Warthog, it's coming. 
Radar homing missiles like the AIM-7 Sparrows have not been denied, they may come in future, which I once again find very interesting. I'd like to see some work done on the radar mechanics of SPAA, allowing for low-flying targets to escape radar tracking, fixing their tracking nap of the earth, stuff like that which I've mentioned before, as well as radar equipped aircraft seeing some unique mechanics based on that. Further development of radar in general can only be good for this likelihood. Helicopters will have rather more advanced air-to-air -air missiles than their fixed-wing counterparts. This casts dispersions on my earlier statements that they may be more useful after all. But Gaijin's response to this is that helicopters will also find it more difficult to get a lock and easier to break it. So even these highly advanced weapon systems shouldn't break the game. Helicopter battles though may be a little more fun with missiles and countermeasures flying all around the place. Or they may get even more broken. I've really no idea. Gaijin states that countermeasures will be introduced with aircraft that had such measures, so obviously they're not going to invent countermeasures that weren't equipped to the aircraft in real life, and they state that aircraft currently seen in-game which could carry air-to-air -air missiles may see them introduced, so planes like the F9, F8 Cougar or FJ4 Fury, and of course equivalents in other nations, may be receiving air-to-air -air missiles in future. And this, in my opinion, will be a great way to ease the bridge between current top tier and supersonic jets with missiles, as something like the F3D2 Sky Knight, which will obviously not be anywhere near the performance of a MiG-19, not even rivaling a MiG-15, but having missiles may make it usable against, say, MiG-17s and such, making it a good in-the-middle aircraft. However, having a total reliance on missiles in order to perform within the meta may not be a good thing. You guys will have to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Other questions aren't quite as significant, there will be no CBT, rank 6 will begin above 9.0 obviously, and there will be an animated effect when aircraft break the sound barrier, which I'm keen as hell for. Aircraft will be added to other nations in future, I think it does suck that the French Mystery 4A or Italian G91Y, which was also used by Germany and could carry air to ground guided missiles very similar in performance to the FJ-4B's AGM-12B bullpups aren't coming immediately, especially when the next patch won't likely be till around March next year, but once again, at least Britain doesn't have to wait. <laughs> Actually, if there's anything I have to say against Gaijin right now, it's that they need to stop doing this. First helicopters and now rank 6 jets, all nations need to get them at the onset, otherwise you sully people's opinions on them by denying them to certain nations. Rank 6 aircraft should be something to be celebrated, an amazing thing, but if you're strictly a German player, you're probably not quite enjoying today as much as I am. And that's a real shame, it shouldn't be the case. One question I have is that will these aircraft see functional afterburners? I mean, the Hun did in real life, as did the MiG-19 I'm pretty sure, although the Javelin did not. There is always the possibility of Gaijin simply denying this ability, as with the Radar AA not having tracking upon release, not until a couple of months ago, and even the T-10M didn't have a functional stabilizer until a couple of years after it was introduced. If afterburners, or reheat as the British equivalent, do come this patch, how will they function? Will it be like WEP in Arcade, where it automatically shuts off after a certain period of time, whether you could keep using it or not? Or will it be a case of it being our own job not to overcook our engines and run dry on fuel? What other aircraft will join these three in rank 6, this patch or next? Will the Mysteri and G91 come this patch as I hope they do? What about the A10, Hawk T1 or Su-25 Frogfoot, F-86H Sabre Dog, MiG-17F, Hunter F6? Will they come yet? Will they be saved for future updates? Will they end up coming at all? Only time will tell. But God does it get me excited, and Rank 5 ARB is already seeing a lot of increased activity compared to, say, last week. I can see why. Last thing to discuss is the potential of missile-equipped SPAA, and I think there's only one thing to say here, it's only a matter of time. If they don't come this patch, they will come next patch, mark my words. Anyway lads, that's going to be it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed. I have the biggest boner right now thinking about A10s and F100s and War Thunder alongside my Abrams, Bradley and Cobra combo. Finally, we can ditch the FJ4s, ME262s and Meteors we've been using for close air support for the past god knows how long, and start receiving some more age-appropriate aircraft. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the premium jet packs. I know, I know, noobs in top tier all over again, but we all knew they were going to happen eventually. So, let me know your thoughts on this announcement. If you're as excited as I am, make sure you leave a comment. Come join me at all these social media links in the video description, and remember to come support me on Patreon if you would like to help me keep pumping out these videos for you guys. It really is a massive help. You can access unique rewards for backing, such as privileges on the Koala Tree, my public Discord server, credits and videos, and even the possibility of joining Dion Albanach, my war 
4th on the squadron, where you guys can feature in future videos yourselves. Until next time lads, always remember, keep your bagpipe to the hand, your kilt on, and I shall see you next video. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Latvian Wolf, Geesley Gadarsen, and Dark Recon, you lads are bro. If you wish to join them, come check out the link in the description below.